Hello, my name is Eric and I was wondering if you could make a camera rig out of 3D printed parts. In the last weeks I taught myself 3D modeling and while learning it, the idea of making a whole camera rig came to my mind. I then found out that somebody I already knew had a 3D printer, so that was a pleasant surprise. The goal of this video is to share the experiences I had with the rig parts I made and to discuss if it is actually possible to use them without endangering your gear. As a base for my rig, I use a small rig cage. This because I think that a solid and therefore metal base is really important. They're pretty affordable too. Also, screw threads in plastic are generally a bad idea, so I thought it would be a bad practice to print a cage. After I had a base, I looked into designing a top handle and a grip for my A6500 cage. I started with the top handle. I decided to use a combination of nature rail and quarter inch screw for mounting. Further, I tried to design it without long, unsupported levers. I added some finger grooves and torture mounts on the front, and that was it. Then I moved on to the grip. There actually already is one designed for the A6500 cage on Thingiverse, but I didn't find it to be quite comfortable and it also blocked the infrared receiver of the camera. So I decided to design one myself. Another thing I found on Thingiverse is this HDMI clamp and because I already had a broken micro HDMI cable, I decided to print that one too. If you're interested in the models I designed or used, you can find links to them in the description down below. So let's now address the elephant in the room. Are 3D printed parts durable enough to be used in your expensive setup or are they destined to fail you? Well, I thought I'd just try it out. I printed the top handles with different characteristics to them. The first I tried to make as cheap as possible, only using 15% infill and 6 outer solid layers for at least some stability. Also I used some cheap, generic Amazon Basics filament. The second one I printed with 100% infill and it used more expensive Prusament filament. With this I wanted to test what influence the print quality had on the test result. So let's get to testing. I set up a pulley system and used a luggage scale to measure the force at which I was pulling. Thanks to the pulley system, my pulling force was quadrupled. I started with the cheap top handle so I could work my way up. I applied the force at the biggest level and therefore the most fragile part of the top handle. Let's first clarify, the connection between the cage and the top handle broke at 16 kilograms of force. Not what surprised me, the top handle seems to be fully intact, it was the cage that failed. The quarter inch screw ripped out the cage's screw thread. After that, the nature rail mount on the top handle deformed, but I already made that part more sturdy by lowering the tolerances on the nature rail mount. I didn't even test the stronger top handle because it was obvious that the weakest link in the chain wasn't the plastic of the top handle. I think a lot more forces were standable with a longer screw. Now to which one of the two I will use. Obviously the one with 100% is heavier, but it also has a nicer surface finish due to the more expensive filament. I like to save weight wherever I can, so I think I will go with the cheaper top handle. But the difference between cheap and expensive in this case is just a euro, so this is really not a decision of price, but one of preference. In general, working with 3D printed parts was really comfortable and I'm planning to print more whenever I feel like there's something missing from my rig. I for example already did a shoot with the top handle I printed and I really noticed that it helped me to achieve a more stable image. While doing this video I also stumbled upon the Edelkron Ortag, which Edelkron makes also a 3D printed version of. It seems to me that not only I have found 3D printed camera accessories to be very useful, but big companies think that way too. We may see some further developments in this area and I'm really curious to see them. And now to the biggest bonus. Only by printing these free parts instead of buying them, you are saving yourself more than a hundred bucks. And when printing, you can even customize the part to your own likings. In my opinion, this is great. As an inspiration to the ones interested, you could probably even build a record button or shutter or aperture dial into a side grip just by using an Adreno Nano or an even smaller microcontroller board. These types of projects when Adreno controls a camera can already be found on YouTube and it doesn't seem to be impossible to make a tiny version of it and cramp it into a 3D printed side handle. In conclusion, I can only advise everyone with access to a 3D printer to at least try and print some rig parts for themselves and see if they like it or not. I too was surprised with the durability test, but it really seems like you have nothing to worry about if your camera weighs less than 5 kilograms. As for now, I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please consider giving a thumbs up and even sharing this with your filmmaker friends. 
If you don't want to miss future videos like this one, please consider subscribing. And with all that said, I hope to see you soon.